palindrome test project gives you practice with using loops or repetition structures. In this project, the user is going to enter a word or phrase, such as Madam, I'm Adam, and the program is going to look at that, strip out any non-alphanumeric characters, so any punctuation, any spaces, reverse the string, and compare the two strings, and if they are the same, both forwards and backwards, case insensitive, it is considered a palindrome. And it would say, yes, that is a palindrome. Race car is another example. But if we said, madam with an E, I'm Adam, that is not a palindrome. It's not the same forwards and backwards with all of the non-alphanumeric characters stripped out and the phrase reversed. So I give a tip here to use a repetition loop, a for loop, to go through each letter of the input. An example would be for XYZ in my string if my string was the input. And loop through each character and then examine the character and determine if it is a letter or a number. And if it is, add it to another string. And I would do two strings at once, one forwards, one backwards. And then compare those two strings. It's as simple as that. This is one of those projects that a lot of students look at and they want to make it harder than it really is. And that's a common problem with developers when they're first starting out is we think, oh, this has got to be difficult. I need to write a whole lot of code to make this work. Rather, sit down and just think about the process you would go through to do this. And that's how you design your algorithm. Well, let's work through the steps it would take to solve this problem. This would be called pseudocode. We're just writing out the steps in English, and then we'll convert this to code once we figure out the process. You can also do a flowchart, be a graphical way of doing this. So the first step is we've got to get the input from the user. So we're going to get the phrase, word, or whatever from the user. It could be a sentence. In a loop, then, we're going to go through that input, and we're going to remove anything that's not alphanumeric, anything that's not an uppercase A through Z, a lowercase A through Z, or the number 0 through 9. So we're going to strip out any spaces, any periods, any commas, any hashtags, any at symbols, any dollar signs. All that needs to be stripped out. Now, my suggestion at that point is make a case insensitive because at some point we're going to have to compare this string with the reverse string, which is step number three, and see if they are the same. And palindromes don't care about casing. So we need to make them either all upper or all lower case. So the third step then is create a reverse string. So we've got a, step two, I'm going to call a clean string. So we're going to create another variable called clean in my case, and that's going to be just the alphanumeric characters. Then I'm going to reverse that. That might be my reversed phrase string variable. The tip I'm going to give you here is you're doing your loop and creating the clean string. You can create the reverse string at the exact same time. All we're doing here is rather than putting the next character after the string we're building, for the reverse string, we're putting that new character that we're saying is an alpha numeric character before the string we're building rather than after. Once you've established those two strings, the clean string and the reverse string, and they are case insensitive, you can compare them. Or you can compare them as case insensitive in the Boolean. If they are the same, we're going to print our output that it is a palindrome. And if, it's, if they're not the same, we'll print output that it's not a palindrome. Let me give you an example. Let's suppose this is the string that the user is entering. And it's going into a variable called phrase. The string has a whole bunch of non-alphanumeric characters. What we'd want to do is strip out those alphanumeric characters and get a string called clean that only contains the numbers and the letters. And then we want to reverse those. Now I kept them case sensitive here so that you could see the difference of this string reversed. In reality, I may have wanted to make it all lowercase or uppercase for the clean, and then I wouldn't have to worry about the reverse phrase being any different as far as case sensitivity. Then we're going to compare them. Now we can compare clean to reverse phrase if they're already case insensitive. If not, though, we can use dot lower to look at each of those and make them case insensitive as we're comparing them, or we can use dot upper. Either way would work. And you can see here that that phrase that the user entered with all those extra characters is indeed a palindrome. 5 kayak 5 is the same forward and backwards. I'm just going to pause the video here and wrestle with writing this Python code yourself. It's not a whole lot of code. Think through this process and convert those steps that we talked about to code. You're going to have input, 
you're going to have a loop that's stripping out everything, creating your clean string, your reverse string. And then a Boolean expression is going to compare, are those strings the same? The clean and reverse string, if they are, your output's going to be yes. If it's not, your output's going to be no. If you get stuck, come back and watch the remainder of this video, and I'll walk you through my code review. But I want you to wrestle with this. You won't become a good programmer without wrestling through the code. Here's my solution to the palindrome tester assignment. And of course, we have a print statements here at the beginning, show the title, the developer, and what this program does. I give some examples of various palindromes. And then we're going to start with the input. So we're going to have the user enter a word, phrase, or sentence, or number. Take that input and place it in a string variable called phrase. I'm going to create another variable called clean that's going to be a null string to start with, as well as a reversed phrase variable that's also null. Those are going to be my two strings with all of the alphanumeric, non-alphanumeric characters stripped out, and the reversed will be the reverse version of clean that we can compare those two in terms of the palindrome or not. So here's the loop we're going to use. We're going to go through each character one at a time in phrase. I'm going to convert phrase to upper. I could use dot lower as well. Inside that loop, I have a nested if structure. So if that character is greater than or equal to an uppercase A, and that character is less than or equal to a lowercase z, so it's A through z, or the character is greater than or equal to 0, and the character is less than or equal to 9. So it can be an alpha character, A through z, or a numeric character, 0 through 9. And if that is true, we're going to add that character to clean. So I use clean plus equals char. That will place that character behind my clean variable one character at a time and build a string of all the alpha numeric characters from our inputted phrase. At the same time, I'm going to do that, take that character and create a reverse phrase. But rather than plus equals char, I'm going to say reverse phrase equals char, that character, plus reverse phrase. That's going to put that new character as we go through the phrase, each character one at a time, it's going to put it in front of reverse phrase as we build that variable string. That gives me my two strings of clean and reversed phrase. And then I need to just compare them. So if clean equals reversed phrase, we're going to print yes. Placeholder zero is indeed a palindrome. And we're going to format the original phrase that they entered with all the non-alphanumeric characters into that placeholder. And if it's not, we're going to say no, it's not a palindrome. We'll see if this works. I'm going to take this phrase, Mr. Owl ate my metal worm. I'm going to copy and paste it as my input. And yes, that is indeed a palindrome. It reads the same forwards and backwards with all the non-alphanumeric characters stripped out. Let me run this again. I'm going to take that same phrase. But you know, I'm just going to throw another letter in here, or a letter. Let's do a letter. I'm going to put a 2. It is no longer an alphanumeric character. Now, if I happen to get the 2 right in the exact center, it still would have been. Probably should have put my 2 at the beginning or end somewhere to so make sure it wasn't a palindrome. But it does not read the same forwards and backwards at this point. Let me show you an alternative way of creating this. Rather than using this complex Boolean expression, there's actually another way we can we can do this using a string method called isAlNum, which we looked at in a previous video. So here's the second version of this program. Using the same code, getting phrase, creating clean and reversed phrase, going through each character phrase, but rather than that complex Boolean, we're simply going to say if char.isAlNum, and that's a method, so I need parentheses, That'll return true if it's an alpha character or a numeric character. And if that's the case, I'm going to add char to clean. And I'm going to add char in front of reversed phrase. That's going to give me my clean and reverse phrase, but I didn't, I didn't make those case insensitive. I could have. I could have said clean equals char dot lower or char dot upper. And same here, char dot lower, char dot upper. That would give me a case insensitive comparison here. But since I didn't do that, I need to make this a case insensitive comparison. So I can do if clean dot lower is equal to reverse phrase dot lower. And if it is, we'll say yes to the palindrome. If it's not, we'll say no. Again, let me run this. So I'm going to copy this phrase. Was it a rat I saw? 
paste that in. And yes, that's a palindrome. Let's test this again. Copy the same phrase. I'm going to add a, uh, a Z in here in front of saw. So it shouldn't be a palindrome. And no, that's not a palindrome. So it is working just fine either way. There's lots of ways this could be done. Those are my two solutions. You might have something totally different, and that's fine. The bottom line is, does it work? And does it work consistently? So make sure you test this a lot. Make sure you test this with all these strings and test it with some non-palindromes. Make sure that it finds those as, as being not palindromes as well. If you just jumped into this video and haven't seen the prior videos to this, I invite you to check out my Python playlist of videos. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos that I create, you can click my picture up in the top right and subscribe to the channel.